Hello, this is Dr. Jeff Phillips, and I am going to take the 7th and 8th grade Mid-State Jazz Trombone Etude apart and help you put it back together for your practicing and for your preparation for the audition. The rattling you hear in the background is one of my dogs chewing on a chew toy. And occasionally you might hear another one of my dogs screaming when I play trombone. But you're not going to do that, are you? Good work. Anyway, so I'm going to start with the blue zone. Overall, you want to keep anything that is not marked with an articulation mark. A house top accent, super, super short. Dots, short. Lines, long. Uh, accents. Anything that's not marked specifically, you want to uh, keep things as legato as you can. Okay? So, slow motion, a little first part. Okay, yeah, hold that out longer. But a um, couple things. One of the things that I've, I like to do, I encourage you to at least try it, even if you don't do it on the, on the audition, uh, just so you'll get uh, more facility and uh, better use of this. It'll start being something you do in everything you play. Is using more chromatic positions. I did not call them alternate positions. I do not believe believe those things actually exist. So, um, what I mean is in the first full measure, you go C, B natural, then play your B flat in a sharp fifth instead of coming back to first because the slide's already going out. I don't think you ought to play every B flat out there, but in general, what I like to do is keep the slide going in the same direction as long as I can, especially when it's on a continuous line. File that away. Okay, so. You just have to listen very carefully and make sure you're in tune. Okay? All right. Uh, notice the articulation in that second measure, or the first full measure. Dee, da, da, da. Okay? You have to start and end those two quarter notes with the tongue. Dot, dot. Uh, all right, and then D flat in the next measure on the and. And then that note short, it's on beat four, the E flat. Okay, and you decrescendo on that E flat that you hold for four counts. All right. So first line, play with a healthy sound. That way you've got some confidence when you first start the audition. Um, and then you just taper everything off from there or you build it up from wherever you start. Okay, so the first line. Yeah, see, he howls, he likes that. Okay, so, uh, I put a, a couple of extra little scoops in there. Some of these things are my interpretation. You don't have to do those. They're not written. They're just the way I would play them. Uh, and is that legal? Can we do things like that? If it's in good taste, yes. If it sounds like poo, don't do it. Okay, that's just a general rule about everything. Um, but yeah, the, the, the last category on your audition is musicality. So, did you play the notes and rhythms? Yes, well, that's a given. You should do that. Did you um, play the dynamics that were there? Yes. Did you make it sound like a piece of music instead of just a mechanical exercise? There you go. You did. The other guy didn't. You get the points, okay? So, that's what you kind of want to look for. Uh, make sure you play, play your audition when you get things kind of medium worked up. Play it for your band director. Play it for your private teacher. So anybody that knows something about music, play it for them. And if they go, what are you doing? That sounds terrible. Well, then don't do that. Uh, you know, especially when it's an interpretation thing. Well, I, I crescendo it on this note. What do you think about that? Okay. But you were allowed to make some intelligent musical decisions. Starting on line two, make sure you come in on beat two, softer, but not so soft, nothing comes out. All right? Okay, yeah. I like to kind of push that whole note somewhere instead of just letting it go lay flat. Um, 
every note in music ought to go somewhere. It either is going to decrescendo or crescendo. It shouldn't just be lay there stagnant like scummy pond water. All right, uh, so I like to kind of crescendo into that quarter rest in the last measure on the second line. Also notice the beat fours, the quarter notes, those two E flats, those are short. So, all right, and you might notice that I have a couple of extra little scoops in there. Again, my way. which is kind of like the other the thing I've just played. All right, and there's a place. Where again, I want to keep those eighth notes smooth. And I started the B flat in fifth, and it went five, four, three, three in measure 10. You don't have to do it that way, but at least try it, okay? Make me a deal. Say you're going to do that. You're going to at least try it. All right, thank you. Now, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, but don't just try it once and go, oh, can you do it? You know, try it a few times, uh, especially early on, just to, if for nothing else, to develop your facility of playing a B-flat in fifth. You're going to find it really handy sometimes, okay? So, uh, the that's my dryer going off, that beep, okay? Uh, all sorts of household noises today. Measure 11. Notice in measure 10, measure 12, line, line, dot, accent, da, di, dot, da. You're also crescendo. Um, it's only a crescendo to a mezzo forte, but there's nothing that says you can't crescendo up and then make your mezzo forte a little bit less. Okay? So, crescendo to something comfortable but not obnoxious. <laughs> continuous eighth notes I'm playing very smooth and uh, what you don't want is don't do that okay make everything very smooth uh, that's right Crockett says Roof. right yes all right so now look at the next thing measure 13 14 these are kind of fun it's a repeated pattern okay and nothing has to be tongued Practice it first, slowly and even instead of swing. Or practice, not for real. Okay? You don't have to tongue any of that except the first note. Okay? Everything can be a natural slur, and that's going to make that smooth, and it's going to keep you from going... Please don't do that. Okay? So, once you have it smooth, even... Okay, so all you have to do is move the slide. It's magic. Okay, um, so you get that, and again, I don't want to get into metrically telling you how to swing. Oh, it's a triplet, and the third note should be. In. That's way too cerebral. Listen to to jazz musicians swing. There's a thing down here at the bottom that says for an example, listen to Count Basie's big band song, Splanky. Uh, anything that Count Basie has done. Listen to that. You'll learn what swing really is. And you copy that style. Okay? Don't Listen to it. Internalize it. Play it. That's the best way to do it. Instead of trying to calculate exactly when to play uh, each note with a metronome subdividing into you know, 1,000 subdivisions on each beat. Why? Okay, so anyway, back to this. Um, notice on measure 14, there's a little bitty tiny, looks like a fingernail almost, or uh, somebody just missed with the, the pen when they were writing this. Um, it goes up to the G flat. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny scoop. It's not huge. Do not do this. It's in fifth position, you go out to like fifth and a half or six at the most. And tongue where you start and smear up to it. Okay? So you want to tongue that note and then move the slide up. Watch 
a short note on the D flat, and then kind of like the beginning, but notice this: the beginning you have ba da dee 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 short short. Here you've got ba da dee 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 long short. Same notes, same rhythm, kind of a different articulation. push it into the rest. All right, now, a couple notes here that will be drastically out of tune if you're not careful. Practice going from E flat to F sharp. Okay, yeah, get that ball up, get those two notes in tune. pitch on those. Those are, those are going uh, three, five, four, three. All those notes that are right in a row. Uh, be, it's easy to play like in between the positions and kind of play quarter tones. We don't want that, okay? Now you've played a lot of quarter notes in this that are marked short. That one is under the curve. So make sure you don't cut that A flat off and go Count your head, six counts, rest on one, and then the fall off. The fall off, look at that squiggly line, it goes all the way down to the rest. So one, two, off. All the way to beat three. You don't go, that's too quick. That's too long. So how long? Well, there's our tempo. So it gets it's fall off on beat two. One, two, off. full sound, but don't hurt people. Again, don't hurt, okay? It's fortissimo, but in context of your crescendo. Alright, right, the next etude for 7th uh, and 8th grade is called On the Beach. Now, up there at the beginning it says Latin. Latin does not mean it was written by Julius Caesar. That was a joke. Okay, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Latin is in this style of music you will play straight eighth notes okay do not do not swing the latin etude no so don't go mm -mm. Mm -mm. no yes you played all the right notes but you played completely wrong interpretation so think Everything one and two and three and four. D D D D da D da da. Everything's even. Your articulation is what's going to give you the feel for this. Again, this says uh, quarter note 140. The other one said quarter note 120. Don't be you know paranoid with your metronome. Play at a comfortable speed that is close to that, but don't just think you have to go that or else. Um, actually. Mid-state and all-state auditions at the high school level have eliminated metronome markings and just say uh, specific or tempo marks and words. They do not use exact uh, tempo markings because many years ago, people were trying to work up the auditions at speeds that were marked with a metronome marking that were insane and no one could do them and we got tired of listening to that. But anyway, I digress. All right, so uh, straight eighths and again, Starts out forte, so with a good comfortable sound. Uh, one, and two, and three. And okay, so you got a little scoop there on the A flat in the second full measure. And you got to articulate that, which you're coming off a, an eighth note on the and of beat two with the F. Have to make the F short. D da do dwe da. So okay. So that that's going to help you clean that up to get the little. It's and again that's kind of like in the other song. It's just a little short little smear up to the A flat. So it doesn't have to be obnoxious.
shuffle there in the one, two, three, the third measure that beat four is on beat four. Tenants would be ba da 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 ba da Ooh. ba da 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 ba da on beat four, okay? <laughs> but don't get so soft nobody can hear you okay beat four short all right so e flat there you go to the next line e natural okay so you got that uh there's something else i was gonna say about that Do -dee -dee -da -dee -da. don't remember what it was uh anyway uh, you hear me making a couple little scoops, kind of like in the last one. Again, that's just my interpretation of how I would play it. Uh, if you like it and it works for you, great. If it doesn't, don't do it. Or if it feels really awkward and you just can't make it sound good, then don't do that, okay? Again, uh, so this is last part of the first line. We're going E flat to E. Alright, so D, 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 dot. We got three E naturals in a row, and the last one specifically has a line over it. I'm gonna make them all legato, but also kind of, and it says piano, crescendo slightly to the F. Okay, so there's some direction to that. And you might want to do something there, dynamically that's not written, uh, under the auspices of piano. Okay, so. Uh, uh. All right. Um, and, and forte there at the end, but don't hurt people. I've been asked by a couple of folks about, well, I think about adding vibrato. Okay. I think it's okay if you feel comfortable doing it, but vibrato is a personal thing, and I don't think it should be dictated. You know, if you have to write over a note, add vibrato starting on beat 2.1, that, that's not it. So in this one, if I wanted to put any there on the end, I might go... But I don't really think I'd do that. Uh, Anyway, uh, back in the other one. Yeah. Vibrato, quick tutorial. Um, hit the note, establish, it, establish that note, and then go above and below it, starting slow, getting faster, tapering off. Now that's a lot to process. So you really do kind of have to, you know, practice it actually. And I, I don't, I hate hearing stuff like. You don't want to sound like the little old lady in church or like my dog howling there. Okay. So those are some things that you might uh, look at. Some things to to maybe add interpretation wise some some ways to go about practicing some practicing some passages so that um things can get a little bit more consistent don't get too uh too psyched out on tempo at the beginning you know just play them play them slowly till you get all the style correct uh, then you can go speed them up um, especially with swing a lot of times people will try to play that you know oh quarter note 120 like it says and they sacrifice style for the tempo. Um, if it's 116 and it's good swing style, that's a whole lot better than trying to play at 124 and <coughs> playing it nasty. Okay. So, hope these comments have uh, been been of some help to you. If you uh, need any other assistance, I've got some other videos on general trombone playing at jeffphillipstrombone.com. Also. Uh, I have a video out that you might find interesting on how to and how not to improv for a, a mid-state audition. So that's something you might want to look at also, just so you know what not to do. That sometimes is important as knowing what to do. Well, again, hope these have helped you and uh, have a great audition. 
and contact me via that website, www.jeffphillipstrombone.com. And uh, you can contact me there if you have any questions or uh, you want any more information. Have a good audition.